approach. Okay, where do we leave off? We left off in the bottom and get on the face. Yeah. How how far at the bottom? Last line. Last line. Oh, great. Okay. <clears throat> so we're um. Thank you. Look at that. Finish it. Coming well. So we're having a little bit of like a medrash rabba. A Megillah says to write here in the Sefer Megillah. So we're recording different uh, introductions that were given uh, by uh, different um, rabbis, uh, different uh, Amoraim, when they were speaking about Megillah Sester. So now we're up to Ravdimi Bar Yitzchak. Ravdimi Bar Yitzchak, Pasuk Le Piskalai Pashasa Mihacha. So he opened up um, uh, when he began discussing Megillah Sester with uh, the following um, salvo. Say a pasuk in Ezra says we were even in our servitude. Kadosh uh, Baruch uh, never abandoned us, and he extended chesed uh, kindness upon us in front of the kings of Paras. Hey Masai, when did that happen? Bisman Haman in the days of Haman. Different gears said days of Mordechai. Same uh, same idea. Uh, that the Kodesh Baruch watched over us. Rabbi Chanina Bar Papa, Pasuk La Piskala Hai Pashasa Mehaka. Next uh, person up is Rabbi Chanina Bar Papa. He said, Ezra came after Ezra. Ezra came after Ezra. Ezra was, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was around the same period. Yeah, Hikafta Enosh Loshenu, but as we'll see, the, the, the whole timeline is going to be discussed on Omen Beis. Hikafta Enosh Loshenu, Banu Be'eshu B'mayim, that uh, you have let uh, men ride over our heads, uh, Pasuk in uh, Tehillim, we came in fire and we came in water. Be'esh B'mayin in Bukhanetzer HaRasha, we were in fire in Bukhanetzer, uh, as we know, uh, through um, uh, the Chanayim uh, Shavad Zari into the fire. Mayim and Baby made power and water. The power was throwing the males into the water. And of course, um, we also were saved in Yasyamsu, but Tosieno, Lerabaya, and we were led out into prosperity as Lerabaya, we made Haman in the days of Haman. Rabbi Yochanan started his um, Drosha and Mir Sester with the following Pasuk from Tehillim also, Zachar Kasto, Ben Manasso, the Vesi Soil. That you uh, provided uh, chesed, those people who weren't worthy. Uh, I think the Marasha says, which that was the chesed, the Amuna, and uh, those who showed their faith, uh, the Mordechai and the other tzaddikim who weren't enemies to the Sachashrevish. So you were kind to all them, the Basi saw, but the salvation came about through the Basi saw, not through the men, but through the women, who are to Esther Malka. A row collapse Aretz, you saw from all ends of the earth, uh, everyone from all ends of the earth has saw. As Yeshua said, the salvation that was brought about by a Kaddish Baruch Hu, say, Mosai, Rav, Kolav, say, Aras, as Yeshua said, Lokeinu. When was it that everybody from all ends of the earth saw the salvation of Shem, and made Mordechai Vester? The days of Mordechai Vester. Mishlakish, Pasuk, Apisca, 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 Mishlakish opened up um, his uh, drasha with the following Pasuk. Um, this is a Pasuk from Mishle. Are we him like a roaring lion? The dove shall cake like a growling bear. Uh, Moshe Rasha, uh, so is a wicked ruler, Al Amdal, on a people who is destitute. Are we knowing a roaring lion, Zen Nebuchadnezzar Rasha? That's a reference to Nebuchadnezzar, the Tzibe, as it says with respect to him, Allah Arye Misovacho, a lion has left uh, the thicket. Dosho Kek Zachashverosh, the growling bear, Zachashverosh, who's compared to a bear by virtue of being the king of Persia, the Tzibe. Baru, and part of the uh, vision uh, seen by Daniel says, Ru Chebe Achare Cheva Achare Sinyana Damia the Dove, that the next uh, beast over in his vision uh, was uh, similar uh, to uh, the second one, uh, was, resembled, a, uh, resembled, resembled a bear. The time of Yosef, Elip Asayim, this is a reference to the, uh, to the Persians, because Akashrevish is the king of Madai Paras, Shaoklim Shosin Kedov, that uh, they eat and drink like a bear. Um, I guess they like honey, I don't know, Suvalin, Basar, Kedob, and they're cloaked in meat, in flesh. They have lots of flesh like a bear. And Galen, Seher, Kedob, and lots of hair, very hairy like a bear. And they're never at rest. They're just like a bear is never at rest. Moshe, Rasha, is a Haman, and the wicked ruler is a reference to Haman. Al Am Dal, on a desk to people at least soil. And this is a reference to the Jewish people, Shein Dalim in a Mitzvah, who were, at least at that point in time, as the implication is, that uh, they um, uh, were weak in the midst of the department. Rabbi Allah said, Pasuk la piska la ha-pashas ha-mehaka. 
Rabbi Elazar opened up uh, his drasha from the following pasuk towards the end of Kohelis. Uh, that um, the, through laziness, the, the ceiling uh, sags, it starts to sag. To the idleness of the hands, a yiflof a bias, the house begins to leak, the roof leaks. Israel Atsu Shayel and we saw because of the laziness that the Jews had shall ask a tire, but they didn't learn Daf Yomi. Nasa Sono Shell Karishbahu Mah. So they caused the Karishbah not to to have uh, the uh, the arsenal uh, to, uh, to 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 stand up for his people. Bain Mach El Ani, the poor means is is a mach is a reference to poverty. Shinamar, as it says, with respect to somebody who's uh, uh, consecrating an evaluation of a person, that if he can't afford it, he's, uh, he's poor, who may he can't afford the evaluation, the estimation. Um, so we see mach means poor, and we're referring to uh, being made poor, you know, uh, it says uh, he makes uh, beams uh, of his uh, chambers uh, in, the, in the waters. Rav Nachman Yitzchak pasuk la piska la ha pashas miyocha. Rav Nachman Yitzchak began from the following: the pasuk to Hillam Shiramalos. Shiramalos lule Hashem shayelanu mayoma lanu yoma na Yisrael lule Hashem shayelanu mikum aleinu adam. If not for Hashem who was there with us when uh, a person stood up and tried to destroy us, then we wouldn't have been saved. So Adam, the, the key here is that we say that um, uh, that. that uh, the, the kings, uh, right, are um, are considered uh, to be believe Hashem. Uh, that whatever they do, uh, so you might say it's exera from a kaddish baruch But here it wasn't from a king. Um, uh, that uh, here it was a, a man. It was Haman, Adam below Melech, uh, who plotted over us. Uh, so therefore, clearly, it was not something that uh, was um, uh, that, that that was meant to be that through hashkacha. But it was uh, something that had to be combated. Rava by a kaddish baruch Rava pasuk la piska the ha. Because we say late Malachim Biyad Hashem, this wasn't late. This wasn't a, wasn't a Mela. Rava pasla piska the hapashas to mehacha. Rava began from the following: Bevos hatzadikim. This is a pasuk in Mishle. Bevos hatzadikim. When the tzadikim rule, Yismachah, everybody's happy. But Mishal Rasha. But if a wicked person reigns, Yenachah, then everyone's going to groan. Bevos hatzadikim Yismachah. Is Mordechai Vester? That's a reference to the way Mordechai Vester when they were in charge was great. Except here Shushan Salav Esamecha. Right? It was fantastic. But when Rasha was in charge, everybody was groaning. That's when Haman was in charge. Everybody was in dismay. That um, we're very thankful for the salvation of uh, the Purim uh, miracle because uh, uh, where people is like uh, the Jewish people that Akash Baruch who watches over us is so near to us. Rashi quoted the pasuk in um, Devarim that said, "Oh, Hanisa Elokim Vegomer Lavo Lakakas Logoi Mikarav Goi." That the Kodesh Baruch Hu saved us uh, from other nations. There's a little bit of a girsa issue over here. The Vayhiva Meach Hashosh we're not quite up, up to yet. We're not ready to start dashing the pesukim one at a time. So the Vilna Gon says you got to wait on one, that one a little bit. Rather, we're still in the introduction. So the Amarav will keep um, the Sarav so said Mehacha Dixiv Mismarked Mismarkatem. Shamlo Evecha, that we were sold uh, into uh, like slavery to our enemies during the time of uh, Purim, Labadim Lishvachos, that Vein Kone, because Haman made a decree according to Rashi, Vein Kone, Gazo Haman Shliyodam, Rosh Liknas, Mian Leavit, that we were to make us so lowly that nobody would even buy us as a slave, that we would be dispensable. Shmuel Amar, and Shmuel began his introduction from the Pasuk in, uh, I think, they were towards the end of Vayikra. Uh, it says, Lo me astim, lo gealtim, lechalosam. I did not uh, uh, despise you. I did not abhor you to destroy you. Um, I did not despise you in the days of the Greeks, and I did not abhor you in the days of Mukhanetsa. We destroyed the base of Mithish, to destroy you completely. You weren't destroyed. I fear we see Itam to undo the covenant um, that was not ever done. We may parse him. In the days that the Persians ruled, because I remain your God even during difficult times, and that is a reference to the Megogu Mogo, the apocalypse. From Masnisa Tana, Masnisa, we have a, a different uh, drasha from the same verse. Lo me astim, be me kastim, I didn't despise you in the days of the kastim. Shimati lem Daniel, Kananya Mishara Zarya, that during the, the kingdom of the kastim, I brought in um, some uh, good um, um, uh, saviors for the Jewish people. Daniel Kanayim Shayu Azayev Lo Gaaltim Imei Yivanim, and I did not abhor you during the days of the Greeks. Shemati Lem Shimon Atzadik, Shimon Atzadik, and the Chashmonaim 
Uvanov, right? The Matisyal Kohen Gadol. Um, so you had uh, you had the um, Yochanan and his uh, and Matisyal and the and, and the Makavim. Uh, the Chalo Sam uh, to destroy you. Mehaman, I didn't destroy you. Shemat and Mordechai Esther because I bought uh, for you. Um, uh, the leaders, uh, the leadership in terms of Mordechai Esther, La Febri Si Itam. I didn't revoke the bris. We made Parsi him in the days of the Persian. Shemat Yilahem and Shel Beis Rebbe Vachak Midoyes. Even when they were in charge, uh, so the governing Eretz Yisrael. So I had Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi and the Chachamim there who were able to keep Torah intact and the tradition uh, transmitted. Kenei Hashem Elokeim, because I am God, I am your Lord, Lord your God. The world to the Asi Lavo and the world to come, the days to come, days of Mashiach and so forth. You're not going to have any ship with Machios. That's all you have to worry about is Kadosh Baruch and Nobody else is going to be able to uh, enslave you or uh, to reign over you. Rabbi Levi, Amma Mehaka. Rabbi Levi's introduction was from here. Even though Sarishu was Yoshe Aris, it's sort of a warning shot. He said, look at what the Torah said, that if you don't get rid of the Yoshe Aris, you don't get rid of all the bad guys, so they're going to be thorns in your eyes. And that's what you know ended up happening uh, later on. You had the descendants of Amalek to Agog, and uh, Agog was saved uh, temporarily, and then Haman came from him, and you had Soros. similarly says, you don't get rid of them. That which I was going to do to them, uh, I'm going to do to you. So therefore, you're going to end up uh, in trouble if you don't wipe out Amalek, for example. And we saw that uh, through the survival of, um, of Haman, who was a descendant of uh, Amalek. Um, so now we're finally up to, you know, beginning to darsh in the actual psukim. So the Gros says, this is where we should say, that uh, the Bayihi is a lotion of Bavai Bahai. Bavai Bahai is a lotion of despair, that this was a time of despair. It was, you know, not the best of times, but rather it was the worst of times. So Amarab, Rab says, that he was a brother of a person who was uh, the uh, a ruler. And he was uh, of a similar uh, mindset, a similar character. Achiv Sharosh, he was the brother of Achiv Shal Nebuchadnezzar of Rosh, of Nebuchadnezzar Shadeh Shnik Rosh, who was called the Rosh in Amar, as it says, a Pasuk in uh, Daniel, I believe, uh, that uh, it says with respect to Nebuchadnezzar, Atu Resha Di Dahava, that you are like the head of gold. He was, he was in charge of like everybody. Ben Gilo Sharosh, he was um, of a similar character of the Rosh, who Arag, who became Shlaro. Uh, who Echariv, that just like Nebuchadnezzar killed it, uh, so so too Achashverosh wanted to kill. Who Echariv, Achashverosh, that Nebuchadnezzar brought about destruction, who became the Achariv. And, uh, and Achashverosh wanted to be, uh, wanted to be Machariv, um, uh, that uh, he stopped the building. If you look in uh, the Psukim in Ezra, it uh, gives Achashverosh uh, the blame for stopping the building of the Beis HaMikdash that had been, begun by, that had been begun by Korosh before him. Shanae Mar, as it says, you see, we know mostly about Akashreosh from Megillah Esther, but if you read the Sefer Ezra, Akashreosh appears there as well. Malchus Akashreosh, Betchilas Malchus Vav, Malchus Ol Kastu Sidna, Ayosha Yuda Yushalayim. He wrote a Sidna, sort of a, a mean, hateful uh, letter that he said uh, that uh, I'm not going to let you continue to build the base of Mikdash. Shmuel Amar Shushku Pinayim Sheyisov Imayim Biyam of Kishulei Kedera. Shmuel says Akashreosh Lashanam Chushkuru that uh, the faces of uh, the Jewish people were uh, blackened. Um, like the black underside of a pot, the, the, the Rabbi Yochanan, because of well, that's so. Rabbi Yochanan, Mark pushes Yochanan says that Achashverosh means anybody who would mention his name would say, Achla I have a headache, I have a headache. That's what Achashverosh means. Rabbi Chadida, Amar Shakunas, and Rashi Biyama, that everybody was made um, destitute during his time. Shenem of Yosem Elchem, Achashverosh Mas, that he made everybody, that's Achashbei Rosh, he made everybody Rosh, he gave them taxes, over taxes, over taxes, over taxes. Who Achashbei Rosh? And he was wicked from the very beginning until the end. Who Asab? So that's the idea of who, that he remained just as bad from the beginning to the end. Similarly, when it says in the Torah, who Asab, it means who Berisha means Gloss of Atsopo. He remained wicked until the very, very end, up until the last the drop. Who does in Maravim? So too does in Maravim. He Berisha means Gloss of Atsopo, and they were wicked throughout. Who are Malach Achaz? Similarly, with respect to Achaz, Berisha means Gloss of Atsopo, who is wicked. Avam, who Avaham is the Pasuk of Deve Ayyavim. It says Avam is Avam. So Avam, who Avam has a similar message in the other direction. Who but He remained righteous. Mitzkilas of Atzov from the beginning until the end. Who Avam and Moshe? Similarly, Avam and Moshe. When it says who Hey Mitzitko Mitzkilas of Atzov, they remained righteous from the beginning until the end. But David who a katan, um, it says with respect to David that he was the, the small one. Who be kanuso? He remained humble. Mitzkilas of Atzov. Hashem she be kanuso. He hit the nats. Wait till Mishagadol men with Torah. Just like he humbled himself and next to when it came to learning Torah. So he gave deference to his rebellion, even when he was uh, not, uh, even when he was just a, a regular um, a person, regular plebe. 
So too, when he became king, he also humbled himself but when he was learning Tyra um, in deference to those who had greater Chachma. Uh, not that he humbled himself in terms of the way that he ruled the land. That was Shoal's mistake. You're not supposed to do that. In, the way, in terms of learning Tyra, he, 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 he humbled himself to his Rebbeim. Amalech, Amarab, Amalech, that with respect to Achashverosh, that he reigned, Amarab Shemalach Me'atzmo, that it means he did it on himself. He just uh, usurped the kingdom. Amilad Shevach, Amilad Ganai. Some say this as praise to Achashverosh, and some say this as um, a, um, a, a, an embarrassment to Achashverosh. Amilad Shevach, some say it as praise. Lo Havi Inish, the Chashit Ma'afa Kavase. There was nobody else who was as uh, important or as great as he was. So therefore, Mimele, he became king. So that's the Sheva, even though he wasn't born into royalty. But some say it for shame. That he wasn't really worthy of being king altogether. It's just that he bought it off. He paid money for it. He gave lots of money, and that's how he ended up being king. But not that he was worthy. He reigned from Hodu all the way into Kush, Minia to Ethiopia. Or there may have been another Kusha that was uh, further east, near, closer to India. The, the, the portion discussed it. So Ravishmul, one of them says, well, Hodu was on one side of the world, and Kush was on the other side of the world, and he reigned in everything in between. Of course, they, they may be next to each other, but it depends on what direction you go. And the other one says, we focus on the fact that they were right next to each other, Abu Kaimi. Just like this was like the centerpiece, the center a portion of his kingdom, like the capital. So the same way that he had control over his capital, so too he had the same measure of control with respect to the rest of his kingdom. Similarly, we say, it's about Shlomo Amelech. Shlomo Amelech ruled over the entire uh, opposite end of uh, the river, from Tipsach and Euphrates, from Tipsach and Azov. And here too, we have the same discussion. One's on one side of the world, the other's on the other side of the world. If you're you know, going in the opposite direction, it means that he reigned over the whole thing. And it says, no, we focus on the fact that they were right next to each other, but the idea was the same measure of control that he had over his capital area, he had over the entirety of the world. 127 uh, countries. Wow, it's pretty good. So I'm a Christa. Mitzchila Malach Sheva. And since we break it up, Sheva, so we have 720 and then 100. First, he began reigning over seven. Then he reigned over another 20. And then he reigned over the other 100. He kept on building up more and more. Right? Okay. Uh, manifest destiny. So why don't we say the same thing with respect to Amam? Sheva Shloshim Measa Shana. That uh, he, we don't darsh in the, the 137 years, that seven stands for something, and 30 stands for something, and 100 stands for something. My darsh is bad. You, you don't have a drasha for that. So we say, no, shiny aqua, the cry you say, no, the, the, here it makes sense to have a drasha because we already said he ruled over the entire world. Everyone knows the world is 127 countries. Who mikdek, mikseev, me hodu veyakush. It says that he reigned from hodu veyakush. And at that time, if you uh, study your history, you would have seen that there's 127 countries. So Sherry Assume Mayam and Dinah Lamale. Also, why do I need to know the count of the countries? I know he ruled over however many countries there was. He, he ruled over one of them. So why do I have to give the number? Shwami Nala Drasha. So that teaches me that it was for the purpose of giving this Drasha. Tanam Abadam. Rabbi said, Shlosha Malka Bekipa, Veiluain. There were three people who ruled over the entire dome of the world, right? Veiluain. Acha ruled over the entire world. Racha Shrevesh, Racha Shrevesh, and Luchanetzer. Acha Vixiv, Chaya Shem, Chaya Shem, Lukacha, and Yesh Koyim, Amukasha, Shlacha, Denisham, the Machsheka, that the Vajit told the Eliyahu and Navi. My, my, my master sent me over the, all the entire world that I had to administer oaths that they didn't see where you were. So you can't administer oaths uh, on somebody unless you rule over them. Below the Hava Malak Alayo, Hekim Matsim Ashbalu, how could he have administered an oath? So obviously, the Akha ruled over the whole world. The Mukhanetzer, the Ksiv, the Mukhanetzer, it says, um, uh, that uh, there'll be a punishment for anyone who doesn't pay the taxes to Babel. That means that he reigned over all of them. Okay. We already said. Okay, next page. Simon Shasta, in case you are uh, keeping uh, score. The Suleika, no, nobody else was there. No other king who reigned over the entire world. Paika Shlomo, um, but isn't, uh, but wasn't there um, uh, Shlomo? We just said, or ruled from you know, I said the tips up the entire, you know, the entire expanse of the world. So they lost all the It didn't last. It didn't last. He was like deposed in his lifetime. So that doesn't count. So that makes sense according to the opinion that says he was a Melech and then he lost the kingdom and never got it back. Melech Behedyo, according to the opinion that he got it back, it was only a temporary period that he lost his kingdom. Melech Behedyo, Melech, and then after because he became Melech again, Michael and so it does, so then that does count. He didn't lose it ultimately. So say not. 
Shlomo, that was a different story. When we say he ruled over everything, it means he ruled from the top to the bottom. Nobody else did that. That's so a separate category. That he ruled over the upper realms and the lower realms. There's nobody else who kind of did that. So therefore, he's in a separate category. Shlomo, um, that uh, Shlomo um, was um, there, you know, on the Kisei Hashem, the throne of Hashem. It's like uh, uh, on some level, uh, he, his mouth was extended upward um, to, the, to the heavenly domains. What about uh, Sancheirib? Sancheirib uh, was certainly of uh, uh, Melech Asher, um, uh, seemed to rule over the whole world. Um, uh, that he said uh, that uh, there was nobody else, uh, that um, this was stated by his general, Rabshika, uh, who said in his name that uh, you, you better give up to Sancheirib because nobody else in the entire world has uh, been able uh, to beat him. So I guess, so we say yeah, but uh, that was because they were threatening to take away Yerushalayim, but ultimately Sanchayev lost. He, he, this is when he was uh, slain in battle. So Haika Yerushalayim, look sure he wasn't able to conquer Yerushalayim. There's a chiskiyah. But Haika Dayavish, what about Dayavish? Tixiv Dayavish Malka that Dayavish the king Kasa the Chava Mayu Mayev Lishnaya the Daim Mecholara that he wrote to, to all of uh, the uh, the nations of the world Shlampon Yiska um, uh, that uh, your, uh, your, your, your your our peace should increase uh, your peace should increase. Um, so he was, um, uh, so he seemed to have a uh, reign over everybody. So Ika Shevet Lomalach Elias. You say, no, there were seven countries that he did not reign over because the Pasuk says, the Ksib Shvar Kodom Dayavish, that it was fitting in front of Dayavish, that he established the number of princes over all of his different provinces, may have asked him 120. That's 120, not 127. So obviously there were seven that he didn't get. What about Koresh? It says with respect, it says with respect to Koresh, the Koresh made this uh, declaration. This is the Pasuk in Ezra. That sounds pretty straightforward. All of the kingdoms of the world that Kodesh Baruch Hu gave me. So the answer is, yeah, that's if he would have been a good guy, if he would have been a good guy and, the, and, and allowed the base of Mikdash to be fully built like he was supposed to, maybe that would have been true. But it didn't end up, um, as the Meforshim explained, but since he wasn't such a good guy, um, so it just ended up being empty words. He was praising himself that, that this is something that he was deemed worthy of doing, but ultimately he didn't act in the way to truly be worthy. So that's why he didn't get it in the end. So continuing our, our darshaning of the Psukim of uh, Megillus Esther. So in those days, in those days, um, uh, as soon as the Akashash became king, but then it says that he did this, you know, feast or whatever in the, the third year of his kingdom. So which is it? Was it right away? Or was it was in the third year of his kingdom. So Amarava, my Keshevis says, no, it means Keshevis and Then it's after he had the calmness of his spirit that he felt that the time had come, that it was clear that the base of Mikdash was not going to be rebuilt. So he could celebrate and he could take all the Kalim of the base of Mikdash and use it for his big uh, Suda. Because clearly uh, the Jews uh, were not going to have uh, their um, uh, their kingdom back. Um, uh, so the Akas he said, "Bilshotza." He calculated that the seventh year would be the seventh year of the Kingdom of Israel. Yeah, we're well, going to see because the Gemara is going to tell us exactly what oh, he did. Okay. So Am Bilshotza Tachasha Vita Bilshotza calculated when the seventy years are supposed to be up, and he messed up. He made a mistake. And, and therefore he celebrated too soon. And as we know, he got whacked. But I'm going to calculate it and I'm not going to mess up and I'm going to wait till the full 70 years. And he thought that he came to the end of the 70 years. That's why he made this giant celebration, this giant feast, but it turned out he messed up too. So my, he was this miscalculation that people were doing and trying to figure out when the 70 years were going to be up. Because Yimio had prophesied that, that uh, the gullus of the Jewish people after the destruction of the first base of Mikdash would only be 70 years. That's the prophecy of Yimio, that the, the Jews are going to be reestablished um, after the Golos bubble after 70 years. There's a question as to whether this Pasuk really belongs here right now. Similarly, with respect to, to Daniel, says the Malos, the Charobos, Yerushalayim, and Shimim Shana, that uh, the, the, after the destruction of Yerushalayim, there would be 70 years. So, Choshev, Abi Mechamesh, the Bukhanetzer. So, Belshatsa calculated the 45 years, the entire 45 years, of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, which was his mistake. He really, he should have only calculated from when there was Golos. And the 23 years that Evel Merudach, Evel Merudach sounds like Evil Merudach, right? But that was just his name. His name was like Evil Knievel. That was his name. You know, Evel Merudach, 
Vitarti Dide, so that gives us um, uh, 68. And then he calculated another two years of Belshazzar was king. So he figured, okay, 70 years, time is up, and there's no base of Mikdash. That means that it's never happening. So now I can celebrate and use the Caleb on the base of Mikdash to make a giant feast of celebration that we've defeated the Jews for good. Hashivim, that's 70 years, up big money, the base Mikdash. So he took out all of the uh, utensils, the base Mikdash, Ishtamishmu, and he started using it. Nebuchadnezzar, Minolan, and the Abi Machami Shan and Malach. How do we know? Nebuchadnezzar. That was Belshazzar. So he made a mistake. He made a miscalculation. And Akashvevi said, I'm not going to make a miscalculation. But we're not done yet. We're, we're, we're going to explain all of the numbers. How do we know that Nebuchadnezzar was the king for uh, 45 years? So I'm a mayor because there are very sukim that are darshan um, that, based, that, that say that the Golos was the, the seventh year and the eighth year, in the 18th year and the 19th year. You look at different um, at different sukim. That's why she says uh, that uh, in Yumiyo and elsewhere. Um, that we have Sukkim that speak about uh, these different years. So what do these years stand for? Um, Gala B'Sheva, Gala B'Shmona, Gala B'Shmona, Sre, Gala B'Sha, Sre. The different uh, Gala's periods after seven years, eight years, 18 years, 19 years. So Gala B'Sheva, the Kibosh Yehoyakim. Nebuchadnezzar became king. The second year of his kingdom, he conquered Yehoyakim, who was uh, then had been the king of Israel and, and made him subservient to him and, uh, and got rid of him. And then um, he, um, he, he, and then uh, he, he, he placed, um, uh, afterwards, Yehoyachid, who was the son of Yehoyachim, he made he made it the king, and then he exiled Yehoyachim afterwards. So Besheva the Kibush Yehoyachim, Golos Yehoyachid. So that was uh, the seven years after uh, the uh, after he had conquered Yehoyachim. Um, so that's when the Golos Yehoyachim took place. Um, seven years later is when he exiled Yehoyachim, who was the um, um, who was the next king, who was the son of uh, yeah. the, son, the son of Yehoyachim after he had. Conquered Yo, vanquished Yehoyakim. He didn't immediately depose Yehoyakim. Yehoyakim stayed around for another six years, and then uh, afterwards they got rid of him. Then Galos Yehoyakim, she Shmona Lebuchanetzer. So then the seventh year, that's when Yehoyakim, the seventh year after the conquest of Yehoyakim, is when Yehoyakim was put into Galos, and that was the eighth year of Lebuchanetzer's rule because he vanquished Yehoyakim in the second year of his rule. So Galos Shmona Esrei, and then the Galos of eighteen years was the Kibush Yehoyakim. Was goes to Kiyahu. So then, eleven years later, um, after Yehoiachin was exiled, um, uh, then uh, Tzikiyahu was exiled, and that's when the base of Mikdash was destroyed. Tzikiyahu, of course, was the uncle of Yehoiachin and the brother of Yehoiachin, and they were both sons of Yoshiyahu Amela. She Shaisrei the Buch and the Buch the Buch Chadnezer. When Tzikiyahu went into Galus after eighteen years of when Yehoiachin was vanquished, it was nineteen years after the Buchanetzer had become king. So I'm a Mar Shana Mishona Kibesh Nimbe. Because we have a timeline over here that the uh, first year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, and we, he immediately went to business. So his first year, he conquered Ninveh. Okay, good. Shniya Kibesh Yehoyakim. The second year, he conquered Yehoyakim and made him subservient to him, even though Yehoyakim was still king at that time. And then it says that after 37 years, uh, the Galus Yehoyakim, after Yehoyakim had been put into Galus, um, uh, Yehuda, uh, Melch Yehuda, uh, in the uh, 12th day of the month, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the 12th month, which is other, um, the 25th day of the month. So that's when Ebu Mudach became king, and he decided that he's going to be nice to Yochin. He didn't make him king again, but, but he decided he's going to bring, he invite him to lunch every day. Very interesting parasha. And he took him out of prison and he started just giving him lunch, having meals together and treating him nicely for the rest of his days. But what do we see from this Pasuk? We see that Eva Mudak became king at that point in time, 37 years after Galus Yoyakin, which of the Galus Yoyakin, of course, was eight years after Nebuchadnezzar became king. Ergo, Nebuchadnezzar was king for 45 years. Okay, so we have Tamni at uh, So So that's um, uh, Tamni. We add it up. Well, the eight years until Yehoyakim was exiled, right, which was seven years after Yehoyakim was vanquished, but it, but it was eight years into the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. And then we see there was another 37 years after Yehoyakim was exiled, plus 37 plus eight, Abi Mechamesh Nebuchadnezzar. It shows you that Nebuchadnezzar was king for 45 years. And then we know that Eva Mudach was king for another 23 years. How do we know that? That's easy. It's tradition, tradition, tradition. That's in the class the Eva Mudach Gemara. That's tradition. And we know that Eva Mudach was king for 23 years. Good. That gets us to 68. Okay, um, yeah. the Tarati today, and then another two years the Belshazzar was king. So he says, Ah, said the 70 years of exile are over. Hashivan Amahashtavadi Slumipraki. 
So now it's the next year, and he says, for sure, they're not going to be redeemed. Up big money, they make the show. So he took uh, the Caleb from the base of Mikdash, Rishtamish, and he made a big uh, feast with them. How did the Kamalay Daniel? So that's why Daniel reprimanded him, because what happened during that feast is that there was writing on the wall. You see, you, right. you never want writing on the wall. That's a bad thing, writing on the wall. And the writing on the wall said, Mana, Mana, Taku, Parsin, and everybody got also scared because they saw like a hand, you know, um, that, that started writing, and he saw a hand that was writing on the wall. And um, he was like, he was, the, he was right, and he was, he was terrified. He was absolutely terrified. Uh, so they brought in Daniel to interpret what was going on. And, uh, and Daniel said, <laughs> you were, you were, you, you, you were a bad boy. That you rose, you you raised yourself up over the, the over, over the king of the heavens. And you brought the kingdom on the base of Mikdash in front of you. That's very bad. So bad things are going to happen to you, and your your kingdom's going to be taken away from you. They tried to mollify Daniel and be nice to him because they figured maybe then the bad um, the omen or the bad uh, tiding would go away, but it didn't go away because that night That night, Loshotza was slain. Um, he was killed. You know that very very night. That was the end of it. Okay, Uksib. And then what happened afterwards? Who became king afterwards? So it says the one who became king after him was Dayavish Mada, the Yavish uh, the Midiite. But Dayavish Mada, Kibo Bachusa, Kibashnin, Shisin Vitartin, he was 62 years old. I don't know why I need to know that. Well, he was 62 years old. So it must be that we're not dashing that per se. Um, uh, so he said that. Um, yeah, sure. Yes. Yes. People get older. You meant to tie. So then he said that um, uh, this was a mistake that was made by Belshitzer. Belshitzer made a mistake uh, that he miscalculated. Um, uh, that I am, uh, I'm going to calculate. I'm not going to make a mistake. This is Akashvari speaking. So Miksiv, the Malchus of Babel. It doesn't say the Malchus Babel. You should calculate. He kept, but Belshitzer calculated the 70 years so when Nebuchadnezzar became king. But there was not, that wasn't the prophecy of Yimyo. Yimyo had said, he didn't say Malchus Bavel, the Bavel Ksiv. My the Bavel, the Galus Bavel. That means the Galus of Bavel. When did the, the beginning of the Galus begin? Was start? It started with the exile of Yehoyachin. The exile of Yehoyachin was eight years later. It was eight years after the Mufanesi became king. So we have another eight years to go. Another eight years after um, the, the calculation of, a, of Belshazzar. He calculated after two years of his kingdom. That was the end of the seven years. You need another eight years. So therefore, Akashveros calculated, okay, so there was another year. Belshazzar was king for three years. So yes, that's one more year. Because he was king three years. So the first two was the end of that 70. Now we need another eight. So that's one in Belshazzar. Then there's another five. You have another five that we add up that the Yavish Mada and Korish were king. So that's another six. And then there was the first two years of the kingdom of Achashverosh and Mishnas Shalosh, the Malcho. So that gets us to the third year. It's great. Now, for sure, the, the, the 70 years are up because it's 70 years from Golos, Yehoyachin, also known as Yechania. So now it's the 70 years from his Golos. And now this is wonderful. I can make a big feast. Hashimin, Chashimin, Kimin the Chazi, the Malu, Shimin, Malu Ifuk. So the 70 years are over and the Jewish people have not been redeemed. I mean, Hashta Vaidei Shulmi Park. So now for sure they're not going to be redeemed anymore. So Afik Mani, the Bey Mikdash. So now he said, okay, now we can really have fun. So he brought out the Caleb from the base of Mikdash and served them as part of his feast, and he used them, and Satan then danced amongst the, everyone in this feast, and caused Vashti to be killed because Akashbeosh um, made a huge mistake. He had not yet won because the 70 years were not over yet. Why are the 70 years not over yet? But he, he, he did the right thing. He counted from Golos. No, he counted from Golos. He should have waited another 11 years. And yeah. counted from the Gullus of Sikiyo, and the Mesa Mikdash was destroyed. That's, I mean, how stupid were these people? It's not that hard to figure out that you count from the Gullus of Mesa Mikdash, okay? Um, so he also made a big mistake. He should have added the, the other 11 years. Should the seven years only count from the destruction of the Mesa Mikdash? Of course. So, 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 how much was, how much was left over? Another Chadi, sir. Another uh, 11 uh, years, or Chad, sorry, another 11 years. So what was the entire uh, reign of Achashverosh? So Rashi Darsh, so it says Abisar. Then it was a total of 14 years. Rashi Rashi Darsh, Darsh is that from the, the um, as it says Vishnas um, he built poor, and then there was another year that the Nesa was done, and then there was another year. It says the Shana, the Kayem, it says the Yaros of Hashinis for the following year. Uh, so therefore, it's a total of 14 years. So he was king for 14 years. So Abisar today. He violated the Mimne uh, base, um, uh, base of Mikdash. So therefore, 
really, uh, the base, when the base of Mikdash should have been rebuilt, because we know that ultimately we did rebuild the base of Mikdash after 70 years. So it should have been in the last year of Achashverosh's reign that the base of Mikdash was built. And yet there's a puzzle that indicates that it didn't happen until two years afterwards. Malam Maxim, that it didn't happen until the Malchus of Korish, who came after Achashverosh, who was also known as Dayavish. He also had the name Dayavish. He was also known as Isra Sakash Shachasta. Um, and it says, in, uh, with respect to him, and this is a Pasuk in Ezra, Ba'adei Matilas Abida Space of the Kardipi Yishalayim, the work of Hashem that was in Yishalayim uh, seized, that was going to seize. This is the, this is a reference to the Korish who came before Akashverosh, that the, the, they started building, but then they stopped building. And then the Pasuk goes on to say, Ba'ava Batela Ad Shnas Tartin Malchus the Yavash Malchras. That it remained dormant, the building of Eisim Mikdash remained dormant until two years into the reign of Dayavish. That's the, the Dayavish who came after Achashverosh. That's two years after Achashverosh. So Amarava Shlaim Shanim Mikutos Havu. So Rava says the two of the seventy years that we counted was where one person's kingdom went into the other person's kingdom. So that you we, you count the last years of one person's kingdom is really the first year of the other person's kingdom. So that's true with respect. Uh, to Belshazzar and Evel Merudach, that last year Belshazzar was the first year of Evel Merudach, and so with respect to Dayavish and Korish, who came before Akashverosh, that the last year of Dayavish was the first year of Korish, so therefore we have two less years, we've got to add on, and two more years to get to the seven years at the end of the count, and that would be the second year of the reign of the Dayavish last Korish, who came after Akashverosh. That's what they submit to. Okay, let's stop there. Okay. What? Oh, this is